The main focus of this chapter is, of course, sum of forces equals m a, which, of course, your sum of forces, also called quote unquote your net force, is a vector that goes in the exact same direction as your acceleration, because mass here is a scalar. So, in order to find out this vector, which is your net force, we can do vector addition using unit vector notation, just like all other vectors. And so you can see already in the question, they give us a few forces over here with i and j component. But let's read the actual question and see why we need that. First off, we're trying to find the acceleration vector. Well, they have given us the magnitude already. That's the magnitude of the acceleration, but we don't have the direction. The direction is going to come from the direction of the net force because they're in the same direction. Let's just quickly sketch a free body diagram of this. Particular object, we got x and y. So f1, we go three in the negative x direction, one, two, three, and two in the positive y direction. So there's f1 with a vector sign, and then we have six. That's three, six, and then minus four in the y direction. So it's going to be over here, f2 like that, and then we have f3, which is two i five j. And of course, roughly speaking, what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the net force, which is the sum of the forces. So you would write F1 head to tail, F2 head to tail, and then F3. Very roughly doing it, and then the net force, the sum of all that. So sum of forces, and from that we can find our acceleration vector, which is going to be in the same direction as my f vector. They're supposed to be in a straight line, but of course we don't do head to tail very much anymore. It's a little clunky. We're gonna do it by component, which it's already in, so it's actually quite quite simple. So sum of forces in this case is gonna be F1 plus F2 plus F3. Writing it all out, stacking them up so I can collect like terms a little easier. Technically, I could probably drop all the zero and just remember to keep my sig figs proper at the end. And then of course the whole thing is in Newton, so I deal with all the i separately from j's, just like algebra. So minus three plus six plus two gives us five i, and then we have two minus four plus five, which gives us plus three j newtons. So here, that, what this is telling us, we have my sum of force, my net force, which is five in the x direction, and three in the y direction, and this is my sum of forces. And this is going to create a little triangle in a certain direction, and we have a similar triangle happening here with a as a vector, also as an angle with a x, a y, and they go in the same direction, so the theta is going to be the same. Therefore, we can find out theta through the force triangle in order to break down the acceleration into its x and y components. So we know that theta can be obtained using arctan of, in this case, they're both positive. So we got three over five. Usually, if it's in any other quadrant, just to get a angle between zero and ninety, we'll take the absolute value. Ignore those negative sign. In any case, this gives us a angle of thirty point nine six degrees. And so I can break this a down. So I have a x is equal to a the magnitude of cosine theta, which we sub in, and we can get the number three point six two seven meters per second square. It's probably enough sig figs. A y similarly, but with sine theta gives us that. Packaging it together. The entire acceleration vector is then the x component. We'll keep three sig figs. Don't forget the units meters per second square. So part A, the acceleration vector is blah. I and J component perfectly defines a vector, so we're good to go there. So I haven't done part A. Let's move on to part B. Part B, we want the mass of the objects. Of course, it all hinges upon equals m a. 
Well, we can do this in a couple of ways. But I'm going to go with the quickest way because we already have my sum of forces vector from above. It's equal to m times my acceleration vector, which I also have. Which, of course, we know a Newton is, as a unit, kilograms meters per second square. So if we cancel out those units, we'll get m is equal to kilograms. This, of course, we can do i separate from the j's. And in both cases, it should give us the same answer because they are in the same direction. Looking at the i component, technically, you only have to do one of the components because m will be the same in both ways. So we have 5 kilogram meters per second square divided by 3.627 meters per second square. Those cancel out. You get kilograms. That, of course, is your mass, which then gets us 1.379 kilograms. You can double check with your J component. And indeed, it gets us the exact same answer. So then for part B, the mass is 1.38 kilograms. So then part C, they're asking us specifically for the speed. So we're talking about speed here, not velocity, but speed. Given that we already have the magnitude of the acceleration, well, that makes it a lot easier because we know that change in speed is equal to the magnitude of the acceleration multiplied by delta t. Delta speed, of course, is your speed final minus speed original, but we already tell that the speed is zero to begin with. So it's just really the final speed. Then we just sub in the magnitude and five seconds, we'll get our answer. Done. Very quick. And then for part D, we want the components of the velocity vector. Well, since we just one velocity, we can use the acceleration as a vector and then just multiply through. Again, delta V because VF minus V naught, where V naught, we're starting from rest. So that part goes to zero. So that does in fact give us VF, which we're after. So instead of using the magnitude now, we're going to use the whole vector. We got that from earlier. in meters per second. So, so packaging in the final answer, we can say that where this here is your X component and that here is your Y component, of course, such as unit vector notation.